Am I doing good? <laughs> Should have went out towards the shop more, but anyway. <laughs> I'm having a little reprieve from the alcohol today. Why? Until tonight. Makes you go too silly. Oh yeah, God, I rip up the town when I get on there. Sweetie! <laughs> come back! <laughs> I'm not! They're following me! Come here, come back, babe! That's okay, babe. All right, then. <laughs> oh. Asshole. Hey. Did you bring your money? No. You oh. took my money off me. Yeah, I did, actually, because you lied to me in how much it cost. <laughs> that coffee this morning. <laughs> Thanks, sir. There's something wrong here. <laughs> what is it? What? That's, Kim, that's Kim's fucking makeup. And this is my camera gear. And I'm making a motion fucking picture, man! Look! What the fuck? <laughs> then it got even better. Kept on cracking on the Kimmy. For a while there, he's cracking on the Kimmy. Brought tears to Rust, Rusty's eyes. The tears were was when she come back to me, though. <laughs> yeah. I thought she was off with him, but then yeah. I fucking bawled when she come back. Yeah. It is it. one of the most spectacular, all for any of Spectacular views you will ever see. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. With the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Baby, don't you understand? That we only get one life away. On a beautiful overcast morning, <laughs> we're going to be leaving Robe, our motel at Robe, aren't we, both? Yeah. Patch of the blue sky there. Not really going to be any rain today, we don't think. But Hopefully not. It's going to warm up next couple of days, so. Well, let's hope it warms up the next couple of hours. Oh, I will. Oh, wait, we'll be there. We'll be there then, yes. No need for it to warm up then, babe. Nah. So. We had a good night in Robe, a very beautiful little town. Got cleaners. to say, we might not be a fan back here, but... Just be careful, the cleaner's about going to our room in a minute. Get out of here, bud. <laughs> what the fuck have you done? <laughs> Get out of here, bud. I should have put my big girl gloves on. Dude, I thought you were going to say you should have put your big pants on, big girl pants on there for a sec, babe. I was going to say, what, haven't you got any undies on? Oh, dear. Look at that. It's a beautiful area, this. Look at this. Even snow's here. Look at that on the ground there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there was snow last night. Kim got a bit chilly, didn't you, babe? Oh, it was a bit cool, yes. And then I put the fan on. Go yeah. figure. Go figure. That's a menopausal woman for you. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we're going to be rocking up to Beachport very soon, aren't we, babe? Sure are. We're going to grab some brekkie there. Oh, we think we are. It's a pretty little place, Beachport. Kim probably can't remember it anyway, so it won't matter. Yeah, I remember one part of it. One part of what? That nice beach, at, beach down the end that we took a panoramic shot of. Oh, right, okay. And there was a cafe. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. As you know, we've just made ourselves uh, our way over from Robe. I think it's about 50 caves or something. We've just took it easy coming across, haven't we? Yeah, now we're ready for brekkie. Yay! Great food over there, they tell us. That's a pub, that one. It's a bit early to be taking Kim to the pub, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right next to the motor in there. That would suit her. Yep. I'd go in there for brekkie and we'd have to book a night in that beach for yeah. motor in. <laughs> I can either ride and drink, but I can't drink and ride. No, that's right. So this is a little Beachport, guys. Beachport is located 391 kilometres south of Adelaide. It is an idyllic holiday destination. It has an historic charm about railway terrace with its elegant stone buildings and beyond the town centre is a typical seaside resort with a relaxed beach holiday atmosphere. The appeal of the town is created by a wonderful mixture of Norfolk pines, pure aqua marine waters, beautiful white sands and a long jetty ideal for fishing and places where visitors can swim and boat. There are a number of significant historic buildings, but mostly the appeal lies in the waters and the scenic drives, conservation parks and walking trails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kim 
could be going for a walk today. Permit what? zone. No, nope, can't can't park there. We might have to come back and back in. Yep. Okay. You got anyone behind you? I've had no one behind me since Robe. <laughs> since Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing good? <laughs> Should have went out towards the shop more, but anyway. I put her in neutral. Yeah, she might like a take off on you, babe. <laughs> The old donk might. Ooh, isn't that pretty, guys? I better watch Kim. I better not take me out yet. Straight back, straight, straight. Yeah, keep coming, keep hey coming. Guys. So we're down at the new, beautiful little beach port in South Australia, aren't we, sweetie? Yep. And um, we'll give you a look around. We're going to go over there at the jetty, see if we can get some brekkie over there, aren't we? Sure are. This is beach port. Oh, we had a little bit overcast. Might even take you out for a walk along that jetty, might we, babe? Maybe. Russ can go out there. Boy, you gotta, you gotta get the soreness out of yourself. Yeah. Okay. I do. Uh, we'll go for breakfast. So here he comes. He's been an order there. Oh. What'd you order? What, mate? Oh, cool. You're all the way down there. That's why I like it. I don't like sitting next to you while you're eating. It goes everywhere. Oh. Yeah. What you mate? Chainsawing through it. Chains why? Your teeth normally do that quite fine. Yeah, I'm like. I've got chaff cutters. You've got chaff cutters? Yeah. Look, I oh know, it's pretty easy. Look, Kim is actually on her chocolate, not alcohol, aren't you, babe? I know. Hey? I'm having a little reprieve from the alcohol today. No? Until tonight. Won't you go too silly? Oh, yeah. God, I rip up the town this when I get on there. Here's our view outside. Not much here, but, you know. Megas count the twos as well, they're on holidays, That's can right. they, babe? This yeah. here is the main street. Right here. Pub down there. Everyone loves the pub, but we're going to go for a walk out on the jetty, aren't we, sweetie? Yep. Okay, so the length of this one's 1,220 metres. Oh, look at all them black oh, flies. Oh, what are they? Black flies, babe. No, the remaining is 772. Come out this they're way, coming. babe. Just walk through them. <laughs> Sweetie, <laughs> come back. I'm not, they're following me. Come here, come back, babe. Come back. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm putting this stuff on. <laughs> Heap of little black flies got her. Oh dear. I remember we were parked down there quite a few years ago and there was black flies everywhere. Oh, this, this looks pretty specky, don't it? Oh, but it's a... um. Overcast day, cray boat out there. Come on, Kimmy. Come the long way, sweetie. Oh, they just hang around there. Yeah. Why? They could smell you, babe. And they they could smell like you. They won't like the smell of me now. <laughs> you right there now, precious? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I've got the deet on. Okay, so we're going out here. How long is this one? I don't know, babe. <laughs> You're not telling the truth. Originally, it was 1,220 metres. Right. Which is 1.2 yes. kilometres. Yes. Now it is 770 metres. Not quite a kilometre. Fuck, I know, fishy. Not oh, good. It is better. <laughs> it's three quarters of a kilometre virtually. But it's not as big as the Guchin one. Guchin? No, not Guchin. What was it called? Um, Port Germain. Which was the longest one. Longest wooden one in Australia, I think they said. Yes, wasn't it? that's yeah. what they said. We got a cray boat out there, guys. You with me, babe? Go on, yeah, throw. it is a little bit. Unfortunately, what? Windy. Windy. Yeah. So walking behind me. You got to stay to the side yeah. of me, sweetie. I'm trying to get out of the wind. You can stay to the side of me a bit more. To the side of me. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to go over that side. There's no way. Oh, you come across this no, side no. then. <laughs> Well, oh, there's a rail there. Yeah, I thought you were pushing me in. I can't keep her happy, can I, guys? Oh, God, poor you. <laughs> yeah, fucking oath. Yeah. And look, she's still clinging on to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. It's a wharf. You're only going to hit water, babe. I know, that's what I'm worried about. I don't know where all the people are gone out of them little boats. Kim had a few problems back there, a few technical issues on working out why those boats are there, and I tried telling her they're from fishing boats, and the fishing boats are out to sea. And they come back in, they grab the dinghy, then they go ashore. <sighs> Fucking hell. Okay, well, <laughs> never ever want to explain that again because she turns around and says to me, Well, where's the big boat? 
I'd already fucking told her they're out to see fishing. <sighs> what that? What part of that she don't understand, I never know. Oh, that must be hard being you. I'll tell you what. I'll be glad when these holidays are over, I'll be able to go on holidays. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you. It's been a good holiday for me. Yeah. I just can't remember everything. Oh. <laughs> so we're still on the wharf, and I'm just trying to explain to old Rusty what this thing oh, is. Here we go. Look at it. <laughs> I explained yeah. what this was, oh, and he's just mate. not getting it. Oh, here's the go, eh? He's not. It's not. <laughs> if I can think this two tons, it wouldn't even lift two ton Tessie here. Look at it. It's a little winchy motor. Wouldn't even lift two so ton So that they can winch their sharks up. Oh, here we out go. Out of their boats. <laughs> when they come back from sea, but they're at sea at the moment. Uh, listen to it. Yeah. Hey, Rusty doesn't know what he's talking about, you know. Hey, hey guys, we're rocking up into Millicent, South Australia. So we're gonna go through the town centre, aren't we, my darling? Sure are. Big roundabout? Yeah, it is. Millicent is one of the major service centres on the limestone coast. It is important for the surrounding farms and timber industry. Since the 1940s, it has been known for its pulp and paper mills. The town known for its huge swimming pool, more like a lake than a pool, and its impressive museum. Nearby is the wild and beautiful Conundra National Park, which edges this great southern ocean and the charming small town of Tantanula, famed for its caves and its tiger. It's a Millicent Township. We're not stopping there. We're um, gonna go out and see if we can find these Tantaluna caves, aren't we, my dear? Sure are. Huh? And so we can have a look at them. Then we might make our way down to Gambia, the mount, as Back they to call the mount. it. Yep. So we'll catch you maybe down at the caves. Okay, so we think we found the caves, don't we, babe? Just about. Well, we... we Not that one. Not that one, babe. No, the next one. This one here, babe? Yes. Okay, so we'll go up here and we'll have a look see if they'll let us in, eh? Every half hour they run, don't they? Yeah, the something like that. The tours are running. Okay, okay. There's not many people here, so they might let us in. Well, I'd be right. No, you're on me left. Can you just check it's not going to lay over too much? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on then. Come Get on, lay her over. Lay her over, babe. Get ready to grab me. Lay her over. There you go. Hang on, it's not finished. <laughs> what do you want to be finished? <laughs> I don't want to fall on the ground. Okay. That's okay, babe. All right then. <laughs> Asshole. Hey, oh, everyone's look. got one of them. So we've pulled up at... Tantanula Caves, haven't we, babe? Yep. And we're going to go in. That's it there. No wonder this caves. Look at all that rock formation yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's Mount Gambia for you, isn't it, babe? Come yes. on, let's go. Onwards and upwards, babe. You coming? This is steep. Oh, here we go. Did you bring your money? No. You oh. took my money off me. Yeah, I did, actually, because you <laughs> lied to me and how much it cost. <laughs> that coffee this morning. Yes. Oh, flies. I did. Okay. Okay, we're going to go into this centre now, and um, we'll show you. What did you say, babe? Did you say that's much better looking than you? I'd agree totally. I said, I did say that. <laughs> yes, okay. This cave here, it was found in 1930. So it was by a young boy named Boy Slane. So he was only 16 years old at the time. So you can imagine he would have been pretty excited when he found it. Um, now he was out hunting for rabbits when he found this one. So he had a pet ferret. He'd send his ferret down into a hole and he'd scare the rabbits out for him. So he did that, sent his pet ferret down into what he thought was a rabbit burrow, but it didn't return. Got a little bit distracted while he was in there. And so Boyce decided he wanted his pet ferret back. So he moved a few rocks aside, but it echoes in there. So he made a bit of a rumbling noise. So it actually scared him. So he went back down the hill where his family lived, grabbed his older brother and he grabbed a torch and came back, his brother obviously gave him a bit of confidence, um, moved a few more rocks aside to the point they could stick their heads in and find the cave. Obviously, they were very impressed with it. The Lane family actually started running tours only 10 days later. Now, the original entrance is up where that plaque is up the top there. So, can you imagine? It didn't look like this when they were running tours. 
everybody'd have to go up this hill and then slide down into the cave. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it was a bit of an experience. It was in 1980, and that's when the Lane family sold to Parks and Wildlife. And that's when they put this cutting in there. So it's put a doorway in, it's made us the first wheelchair accessible cave in Australia. So before I take you through, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, obviously, please stick to the paths, it's pretty standard. Um, you can take photos and you can use flash, that's fine, it doesn't harm it. Um, most important one though is we're not allowed to touch any of the decorations and I know it's tempting even as an adult. <laughs> They're up really close um, but there's oils in our hands that turn them black and stop them from growing. So unfortunately we're not allowed to as much as we want to. <laughs> so come through and I'll take you in. Thanks sir. As you can see, it's certainly a spectacular one. <laughs> so we've got lots and lots of stalactites up on the roof here. So at the moment you can see there's little water droplets hanging on the ends of them. So that water is how all of these grow. So water passes through the soil, goes through the white stuff is limestone. This orange stuff there, that's dolomites. That's limestone with a bit of magnesium in it. So it passes through the limestone and the dolomite and it collects something called calcite. When that calcite comes into the cave, it gets deposited somewhere. So if it deposits on the roof, you get these stalactites. If it doesn't have time to stick to the roof and it drops down to the ground, that's when you, when you get your stalactites. So then you've got this big layer here. So when it goes from the floor to the ceiling, that's called a column. So then we've got something special here. These ones here are called shawls or curtains. So that's when the water has to travel along a curve in the roof, leaves behind traces of that calcite as it goes, keeps on doing that until eventually you get these sheets. You can see that it's been broken off here. So they don't naturally break off. That one was actually broken off by Boyce Lane in 1930. <laughs> so this tiny little cell type that's forming at the bottom there, we know is 91 years old. Sheesh. So absolutely incredible. They estimate our cave is between three to 500,000 years old. Wow. So they get their estimate of the age from the fact that they found some fossil with seal bones and seashells. So they know it was underwater at some point and the last time the ocean was up to this level was 300,000 years ago. 91 years old, that boat. I know, it's that crazy. <laughs> 91. See how long it's took. Mm. Oh, Rusty's gone. I can't find him. Playing hide and seek, I think. Where are you, babe? How are you up here? I'm here, babe. Playing hide and seek. How old was it? 350,000 years? One of them could come down and spear you in the heart, babe. I know, I'm you worried. Are a... Look at that big that one, that one could do it. Yep, that one there could do it. Hey. Yeah. Mm. It actually all looks like prehistoric animals embedded in the stone, doesn't it? Yeah. And some young boy found all this. Yeah. Come in from the top originally from somewhere. This access door wasn't here, but he come in from the top here somewhere and down into it. Marvellous. There's a tiny hole there, look.
That was the Tentanula Caves. Absolutely beautiful. They're only small, but still. And originally, that was not there, as you might have heard us say, that door. It was through an entrance up there the little boy found uh, the way in there through chasing his ferret, wasn't he? Yeah, looking for rabbits. Yeah. What year was it? 1930 something? Oh, I don't know. He discovered it on March 28th, 1930, unbailed by the Yorkshire with the mayor of Millicent. Mm. Yeah, it was found in 1930. Cool. And then in 1980 something they sold it to the parks. Yeah, 83 they sold it to the parks. That's the information centre there. That's where you got to go and pay for your tickets. Very beautiful area though, isn't it, babe? And how old was the cave? It's, I think they said millions of years, didn't she? Not 350,000, no. I think she said millions. I thought she said No, over. because they found um, dead sea animals and everything in there, so it was originally covered by water, the ocean. But anyway, uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear her say that yeah. um, with her commentary, okay? Yeah, yeah. So we'll catch you down the road, guys. A very special moment night, very special indeed. It's not often Rusty gets his tea cooked by Kimmy. And it's a what is happening in the boat? What? What's happening? Look at tea, mate. It's good, look, look. The bitch is in the kitchen. The bitch is in the kitchen. Right? Oh, that's her. And look at this. Cooking Rusty a nice steak. Isn't it? And what are we having with boat? We're having potato salad. <laughs> mushy, mushy, mushies. Magic mushies. And we're also having some veggies. Looking healthy tonight, isn't it, guys, eh? Looking very healthy. But why not? We're too far gone, I'm just amazed I've got her to cook. I don't care about anything else. She's cooking, look. The bitch is in the kitchen. Hey, all you got to do now is be barefoot and pregnant. <laughs> I'll cross back to you guys when she's actually cooked a decent meal. Oh, wait a minute, I'll probably never cross back. I know! <laughs> I was thinking that's going to be a few years. Yeah, oh, I won't be crossing back. I'll have to cross back at the pub, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's happened. She's cooked a meal. Wait till you see this, guys! And, no, we're not at a restaurant. We're not at a hotel anywhere. Kimmy's cooked this. Believe it or not. Wait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mushroom, veggies, potato salad. We've got gravy somewhere, haven't we? Steak knife. No, that. What, we, is it that tough? I need a steak knife. We've got gravy. That's Kimmy's. You've done well, babe. Have you used every utensil in the kitchen? Yes. Just about, mate. haven't you? Look. Yeah, look, no, she has. Well, I didn't have a lid for the frying pan, so I used that, but look, it's a little bit warped. Yeah, she warped there. That. So, we've probably got plastic poisoning now, Nick. Yeah, and look. Because of your mother. No, you did not do that to the floor. Sure? That's concrete underneath. We're going to sit down and we're going to enjoy this meal. Look at this. I've even served her up a wine. Look at this. I served her up one of them. Wine, because we're romantic. Yeah, because we're at... candles aren't going. They blew out. It's too windy here at Mount Gambia tonight, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hey guys, we're bargaining. Two, four, six, eight. Bogging, don't wait. Mm -hmm. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, because I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me all wrong I was so mistaken Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better